we have AWS Supply Chain coming to join us to talk about uh, three different launches that they had uh, recently. They've got some new features to help out uh, anyone who works in supply chain, those analysts, those builders uh, that get in there and keep things moving for those companies. So without further ado, let's bring up our friends from AWS Supply Chain. All right. We've got Diego and Vikram. Diego, start us off. Hey, how are you? We're doing great. It's Friday. What better place to be than AWS on air? Sure. No, this is very exciting. Very, very thankful for being here with you guys today and Jasmine AM. Um, I'm very excited to share all, also about the news about our great products that we just launched uh, a week ago at, at National Retail Federation. Very nice. And what do you do uh, with supply chain, Diego? Tell us uh, more. I am the VP yeah, of right. AWS Supply Chain, so I'm, I'm in charge of uh, developing and, and rolling these products out to the market. And Vikran is my partner to help me position these products uh, with our customers and, and, and making sure that we can uh, delight our customers with what we're building here. Very nice. Welcome to the stream as well, Vikram. How are you today? I'm doing good, AM. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Diego. Hey. Hey. You're going to be driving that demo for us later, I hear. Yeah. Okay, perfect. We'll 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 be looking forward to that. But Diego, let's let's start off maybe with uh, setting the stage on who this this product is for, right? So we we're talking about supply chain. We got people working in the supply chain, and this is a this is a full featured solution, right? This is this is not maybe some people who are used to AWS are more used to the uh, kind of building blocks that we give, but this is a full featured solution, in fact, uh, for supply chain users. Yeah. Th that is correct. And uh, really, uh, we, we've been in this journey for the last two years. Uh, our, as, as our customers are trying to move up the, the stack, uh, customers are coming to us and say, hey, um, we love uh, your supply chain experience. You, you know, you guys run one of the largest e-commerce retailers in the world. I'm sure there's a lot of knowledge there that we can leverage and our companies can leverage to be able to continue expanding or improving our supply chain. So. Basically, we have built an application, a cloud-based application that is really helping our customers to get better information about their supply chain, get better information about where the data is. So we are a very data-centric application, and that very much goes in line with our strategy about Gen AI and other ML power capabilities that we have in our application. So first, we launched this application to be able to combine all these dispersed systems, data that is coming from supply chain, point solutions, uh, we've been able to get all that information to our supply chain data lake. Uh, then we've been able to expand those capabilities to be able to get better sensing in terms of the demand where the product is in a uh, close to the consumer. And while we get a better demand from the consumer, then we can start helping them to position the product closer to them. And customers really love how that product works. They love the simplification of the application. They love how we were able to help them getting to understand their supply chain much faster. So after our first launch, customers came and say, hey, we want to make sure that you guys build the same capabilities, but let's do it upstream. So which means let's, let's make sure that we connect the supply, uh, sorry, the, the demand from the customers. And now we connect that demand from the customers with the suppliers. So we get a better understanding of where the product is coming in, who are the vendors, who are the suppliers. So now you can say AW Supply Chain is offering an end-to-end -end supply chain application for our customers for all industries so it's very exciting yeah when i was first learning about this from you all uh just just a few days ago uh and and i've, I've talked with you all a little bit in the past too with uh yeah. supply chain folks vikram i believe uh you and i we've, we've been together on here before uh but you know one of the things that really stood out to me and i i obviously am not in the supply chain industry whatsoever but uh i heard it described as you know, the, these, these people operating within the supply chain that are, are working on systems and things, filling orders, doing all this checking inventory, they have to go across multiple disparate systems with different interfaces, different protocol. Like just getting the data to do this is very complex, very difficult, and takes a long time for them. And so when I heard about this data lake within this the AWS supply chain product, that to me sounded very kind of key and vital to, to what you all are building over there. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that data lake and where it fits in with, with what you're offering? Yeah, the, the supply chain data lake is really the key foundational component of our application. 
um, because we, we want to get data into our supply chain data lake from structured systems, you know, uh, or unstructured uh, data also to the supply chain data lake. So that is helping us to be able to then provide our customers better answers uh, about not only their supply chain, but all their uh, variables that might be affecting their supply chain. For example, correct, uh, if there is a weather event in, in the Midwest or in the Northeast, uh, or then we will know that there's a storm that is affecting our customers' orders. We will be able to give them better insights about, hey, if there's a is if there's a storm and it's going to affect my orders in a specific region, what are my capabilities of re-evaluating the inventory across my supply chain? And then moving that inventory in a very um, cost-effective way for our customers, but also looking in terms of variables like sustainability, uh, making sure that the overall inventory health or my supply chain will be covered when, when I suggest those movements. What I mean by that, uh, AM and, and Jasmine, is that the system will take machine learning algorithms to learn where is the best inventory that I have, recommend that to the users. The users take that, those, in, those outputs from the system, and then we start executing those movements of inventory. Of course, all that has to be orchestrated, that has to be connected. There's mul multiple other pieces, but it's the engine that really provides the, the, the intelligence to these supply chains to be more resilient, to be able to drive better data, and at the end of the day, to be able to provide much better customer success uh, because customers will go to a store and they will find a product, or if customers go and order online, they will be able to know that that product is gonna be delivered at the right place, at the right time, whenever they place their order. So it's really all connected, correct? And at the end of the day, we make supply chain very exciting. We make things uh, very complex. We, we users, meaning you, AM, Jasmine, Vika and I, because we're users and we want things faster. We want things in this place, in another place, this color. We want our name. We, we need special uh, requirements. So that's exciting about the supply chain. It's very connected to the end user. It's very connected to everybody. So companies need to be able to react much in a, in a, in a much agile way to be able to uh, provide a response in an ever-changing world. And supply chains get affected by other events, correct? Things that are happening in the, in the Middle East, things that are happening in the Panama Canal or weather events like we mentioned or increases in, in prices. So all of that really affects supply chain. So that's why having all that data in the supply chain that you can start then um, uh, getting that information to feed into our customers and help them navigate their, their most challenging requirements is critical and has been the right uh, approach to help our customers. Yeah, Diego, you are making supply chain so interesting. I'm like, I'm a user. I want to show up to the store or online, wherever I'm shopping and really be able to get what I want, you know, when I want it, right? And so I don't often think about all those people on the back end, right? And you mentioned Amazon has, you know, over 25 years of experience in this, and this is the way we bring it to the customer. So we're thinking about, you know, the resiliency, the automation, all of the data and doing that at speed. So yeah I, i'm sure people want to see it sure let's let's go let's go ahead go all right vikram let me uh pull up your screen are you ready yeah here we go all right uh, so let's let's jump into a quick demonstration of the application right so uh, it all starts with data and we know that supply chain data is scattered across multiple different systems. So the first thing that after hearing our customers speak is that we understand that there needs to be a mechanism to bring in data from all these different sources, right? So what you see here is an easy way for our uh, builders or for our customers specifically uh, to be able to tap into these different systems in order to start the data ingestion process into our supply chain data lake. Now, as we uh, collect data from all these different uh, supply chain systems, what the application is doing in our supply chain data lake is that it's forming opinionated data model, which is to like sort of take the data from the source system and map it to the right entity as it represents mm. for the supply chain, right? Because contextualizing that information in supply chain terms is really important to drive some of the efficiencies that our customers are looking for, right? Now, right. if once we complete the process of data ingestion, at this point, we turn the control over to the customer to offer them visibility at a higher level. And also uh, the machine learning algorithms behind the scene are running to 
not only give visibility to the user in terms of hey where is my product uh, um, you know how is my stocking looking like but it is also offering insights to uh, to to uh, uh, advise them on problems and also mitigation steps to resolve any risk right that you see in terms of supply chain right now if you take the problem of supply chain and this phenomenon is something that we all saw during pandemic right like we saw product shortages in stores all around us so for that there are two components to um, addressing that problem when we talk to the customers right so there is demand and then there is supply so there is the problem of getting your demand right and uh, lining up supply the right way to solve the the demand problem right. so with aws supply chains demand planning module the application leverages machine learning algorithms to generate accurate forecasts right now these are features uh, that existed before but for today we will specifically look at the other arm which is the supply planning arm right now if you take the demand that originates within our demand forecast that originates within our application the supply planning module um, allows our customers to get a better understanding of what is it that you need right in order to sa satisfy the customer's demand right so typically these are orders that are written out to uh, various systems and with for the right uh, quantity and the right site in order to be able to satisfy the end customer demand now with aws supply chains supply planning capability uh, there are a couple of things to uh, key things to highlight right so here we start with a 20000 foot view of your supply picture to say how many products i have uh, what are the different sites that I'm planning for and what are the, the different purchase orders that I currently need to be focusing on, right? And it also does this uh, uh, smart way of splitting that by the dollar amount, right? Because one of the common challenges that's faced by the customer is that they know how many units they need, but they are finding it hard to correlate to a dollar uh, value type, right? Because in real time, yeah. if you want to see like, you know, how many, uh, like, you know, what is the amount that you are spending on a, a, a particular purchase order? The application right. presents it to their fingertips, right, at, uh, at, at, this, uh, at this view. Now, in order to delve deeper into the intelligence, into the, the, the quantity that is being generated, the application has supply insights, right, which uh, gives them, starting from uh, a, a level 100, drills down all the way to like subsequent layers to get a deeper understanding on the buy itself. And let's take a look at an example to understand what that is. So here I have a request for five purchase orders with a value of $74,000 uh, in order to meet my demand. Now, as a supply planner, if I drill down into the next level, what this does is that it breaks down into the various line items that I need within the purchase order to satisfy the demand. Now, if you notice, the application also does a side-by-side -side comparison to say, hey, as a supply planner, this is 30% higher than the last order that placed. Meaning here, the application is tracking the demand changes continuously to say like the order that I placed the last time is 30% lower than to what the application is predicting now, right? Now that's the first level of intelligence. Now, typically when we talk to our customers or when we look at um, this problem at our customer space, uh, the challenge is to actually tie this to uh, the downstream demand. Right. Say, for example, you are moving uh, demand or you are moving supply to a particular location. It is very hard to get a picture of where is it going to be subsequently used? Because when we think about supply chain, they are all connected or interconnected. Right. So within AWS supply chain, uh, if the user wants to drill down, the, the application gives them the breakdown to say how is that demand computed and also the breakdown of how it is going to be used subsequently, right? And this is a great value add to the customer because uh, it is kind of completes the picture from a network standpoint, right? Now, this is with respect to supply planning, but you can imagine in, a, in any customer, uh, we have this notion of multiple partners, multiple suppliers grouped together. So with end tier capability, what our application does is that it gives the user the flexibility to look at all the partners or suppliers that are currently uh, in the system with respect to that customer and give them the access to what is happening with each one of those suppliers at fingertips, right? And this is especially critical for those top three, top five suppliers for our customers 
because that's truly important to drive business decisions. Right. And finally, the last one that I wanted to quickly uh, touch upon is the sustainability model. Now, with in recent times, with companies moving towards ESG goals, um, one of the things that's becoming harder for our, for our customers to track are some of those uh, documents related to safety compliance or audit reports or environmental uh, reports and so on and so forth. That oftentimes these reports are trapped in like uh, separate systems, emails, faxes, papers, printouts, and so on. So the process is so disconnected or disjointed. So with AWS supply chain's sustainability model, what this does is that it brings all of that information together in a central location for our customers to get a better handle on uh, what is happening some of, uh, to some of those audit reports and how can they keep track of all the partners that they are working with and make sure that you know, everything is in a single place. Now, overall, when we look at the, the roll-up of the sustainability, our application does, uh, 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 does the job or does the heavy lifting on behalf of our customers to collect this information from all our partners and to bubble this up in the form of a dashboard like this. So as a user, if they are interested in drilling down into the ESG uh, reporting, say, for example, if they want to drill down into scope three emotions, all they can do is like click on the, the widget there and then that gets them to uh, the next level of information as, as things are being presented to them by their partners. That's great, Vikram. I, uh, I, I got to do a time check here for us. Uh, this, this has flown by and it's, it's really exciting. It's, look, I can see... Uh, obviously, there, there's. Uh, you already told us about the siloed data problem within the supply chain uh, industry, right? And now that all of this is getting serviced in one area, you can start doing, you know, really interesting things with the data. Now that you have a much fuller, you know, idea of what's happening across your inventory and across all of your order fulfillment and all these things that are really difficult to track uh, across disparate systems. So, I see the value. This is incredible. Uh, but unfortunately, we do have to move to our next segment. So please, can we uh, can we maybe talk about quickly how somebody can get more information if they're looking to start using AWS Supply Chain today? Sure, they can go to AWS Supply Chain and get more information from us, and then we will connect them with one of our experts, and um, it will be easy for them to go from there. I love that answer. Yeah, that's that's we, the simplest answer there is. That's great. The, and if you're a builder and you want to try it, you can go to our console and start using the application right away. Um, you know, we have a, a, a large team of experts that are here ready to support your business needs. So I'm uh, really uh, excited to start engaging with everybody who wants to learn more about our application. Very cool. Diego, Vikram, thank you both for joining thank us. Thank and, you. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Thank you. you